Oh, sugar honey ice tea. It's the EAC show. Good day, ladies and gents. I'm Emilio A. Colon, and welcome to the EAC show. Coming to you from sunny South Florida, joined by Marcus Mack and the big one UCF activist, overall sports enthusiast, very, very happy Green Bay Packers fan, Cameron Dinnan. Cameron, what's going on with you today, man? Uh, it's going well. I wouldn't say very, very, very happy, but I am content with how things went. Let's just so let say me it. do that over. Very, 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 very content Green Bay Packers fan, Cameron Dinnan. Yes, absolutely. As, as, as you can see, we see, uh, we see Emilio has his Jets hat on. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. You know, he's I, not for nothing. The sexy picks yesterday. I wanted Jerry Judy. I said it on our IG post. We didn't get Jerry Judy. It's okay. We got the offensive lineman. I'm okay with that. There's nothing wrong with picking an offensive uh, lineman. You know, protect your quarterback. Help the run game. We'll get into a little bit of that. But, guys, today's our F it Friday episode, episode 32. Yo, no holes bars, language and all, curses and everything. We're good to go. Yeah, we're going to need it, too, because, I mean, the draft was was definitely fun. A lot of things to curse about here and there. But um, all in all, not too many mistakes were made. Not a lot of techni technical difficulties, which was a miracle. Knock on wood, we're, we're watching the second and third rounds live here uh, as we're recording this episode. Shout out to the people on Instagram, because the post that I've been putting on Instagram about Jerry Jones stunting on his fucking yacht in the middle of God knows where, fucking uh, Cliff Kingsbury. Cliff, Cliff Kingsbury is living the life. His living room to watch the draft was insane. Like Two, two notes. Jerry Jones, like you mentioned, he looked like his couch area. He looked like he was on a space shuttle or he was in the future. And then Cliff Kingsbury, that setting that you posted, he looks like he's in a GQ magazine. Fucking Ocean Drive magazine. Like, that's yeah, exactly it, what it is. It's, it's Ocean Drive, South Beach style living Ocean Drive magazine shit. You know you, hey, listen, you know you are uh, getting paid and you got bread when you have grass in Arizona, when you have grass in your yard in Arizona. That's a that's like a wealthy thing to have over there. Shout out to Jerry Jones for stunting on his $225 million yacht with his excellent Wi-Fi. That motherfucker made a pick from the middle of nowhere in the in the Atlantic or wherever the fuck he was. He made that pick, got got the receiver yeah. he wanted. Yeah. And I like I like how you pointed that out because that Wi-Fi connection was groundbreaking. <laughs> that, that picture I mean, he took he is, his stadium <laughs> is sponsored by AT&T, so I'm pretty sure right. he can talk to the fucking yeah. moon if he wanted to. Yeah, he made he made that pick in international waters, so uh, I'm not sure if it will hold up, but we'll see. And not for nothing, let's give it up to the GOAT. Mr. Six Rings, Mr. All Y'all Can Kiss My Ass, Mr. I Don't Give a Damn, Bill Belichick, who is literally making these picks from Nantucket with, like, his hand in his pants and, like, tube socks and a ripped T-shirt and, like, shorts that he's wearing from, like, three days ago. Like, yeah, he's like, he's like the guy in your fantasy football draft where everyone's getting so serious about it. They, you all meet at your buddy's house. You got your laptop and your notebook open. You got the latest copy of Fantasy Football Now magazine that they were selling at Publix. You, know, you picked it up on your way over. And he comes in with a sandwich and just his cell phone. And he's sitting on the couch watching TV. And they're like, hey, Bill, it's your turn to pick now. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, He walks over. He no, sees who what's Cam, there, and he's like, all right, Cam, yeah, give me that. He said, fuck it. I'm going to sleep. Trade the fucking pick. It was 1045. Yeah. <laughs> he was already knocked out. And then in the second round, in the second round, he chooses a safety from Leroy Ryan University in North Carolina, which is Division Two football. Forget every Division One team in the nation. Forget all of the motherfuckers. I'm going to Division Two, and I'm going to get Kyle Duggar. Yep. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty amazing. He doesn't, like you said, we, we go back, we were talking about uh, Green Bay getting their guy with Jordan Love, whether people think it was early or late or whatever. Talk about Bill Belichick getting his guy. You think he could have waited to get that guy? You probably, he probably could have waited another round to get the guy out of Lenore. What was it? Lenore Ryan University in North Carolina. Yes. I saw it was in a town called Hickory, North Carolina. Listen to uh, me. Shout out to Kyle Duggan, his family. Your dream came true. You're going to play in the NFL. So happy for you. The odds are stacked up against you. He plays in Division Two. Nobody even goes to those goddamn games. But, like, he is literally a New England Patriot. And shout out to the GOAT, Bill Belichick, for finding the most needless of needle haystack players in the world. 
Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty, obs- he's a pretty obscure prospect when you think about it. Not only are there like 183 FBS level football, uh, Division One level football teams, then they have the FCS, which is used to be known as Division One AA. There's a God knows how many teams are in the FCS. Then you have Division Two football, which is where Bill Belichick was able to find this kid. So Marcus oh, Mack. Be- Marcus Smack, I need to get you in on this real quick. Talk to me. Name a pair of sneakers that you had once that you wish you had again from years and years ago. Um. Oh, man. Uh, the Gucci phone posit ones. Gucci phone posit ones. Imagine Gucci phone posit ones being in fucking Hickory, North Carolina in a Division II college in some kid's closet and you got to go find it. I- I'm going. I'm going. A a as, a matter of fact, sure. as a matter of fact, and I'm going to offer that kid dinner and everything. Cameron, <laughs> seriously, it's a Where's Waldo search. Right. It's, it's a very, it's a hard find. Like you said, it's a needle in a haystack. So um, he must have loved what he saw. I would love to see the notes, the draft notes on him or any kind of pro day footage because it's pretty interesting pick at very high in the second dra- round. Fifth pick overall in the second round. That's pretty much late first round when you really think about it. It's, it's so close to being first round and this kid's so obscure and he's a safety. And we just saw Xavier McKinney get pulled with the first or second pick in the second round and he's quote unquote the best safety in this draft so I mean geez uh, something's got to give there so he must have really saw something that none of us see or at least w- thought highly enough for him to take him this early in the draft when he could have waited do you guys remember in the last dance when Jerry Reinsdorf said to Michael Jordan when it was talking about his injury and it being 90 10 and Michael Jordan was looking at it like look it's a 90 percent chance that I'm okay and it's a 10 percent chance I get hurt I can play but Jerry Reinsdorf, the owner of the Bulls, said, well, Michael, you got to look at it the other way. If I gave you a bottle of pills and gave you 10 of them and said one of them could kill you and nine of them could save your life, you know, right. would you take the pills? And he said, how bad is my fucking headache? Which is a true story. But in this case, if that one pill is the player from Lior Ryan University, the, the bottle of pills has to have like 500 pills in there and only one is him. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Belichick will take his chances. It's not the first time, not the last time. So, hey, kudos to him. You know, you hey, think listen. he cares? You think he gives anything about uh, what people? He don't are give about two shits, yo. He yeah. don't give two shits. He is stunting for real, for real. Goat alert on him. Yo, no, we were supposed to talk about a little bit of first round. We got a little bit over ourselves with this. Like, you on Ryan University, Kyle Digger, yeah. you know, pick. But overall, the first round was okay until we witnessed the. Str- Great, change of gear, leave it up to the Green Bay Packers to shake everything up. The draft was boring, nothing was going on, and then all of a sudden, bam! There you go, right in the face. Here you go, Jordan Love. I love my I love my Packers for doing it too. We needed a little excitement in the draft later rounds. Um, a lot of people are saying, a lot of people are going crazy. Like, how can you not get a wide receiver? This is the time. This was the year you get one for Aaron Rodgers. Blah blah blah. Um, so I understand a lot of fans' frustrations with not getting a wide receiver and my thoughts originally which I spoke to Emilio about this earlier before the show uh, earlier today is yes I wanted a wide receiver before drafting Jordan Love I came on the show um, on Wednesday before the draft and I said the Packers are going to draft Jordan Love I nailed it right on the head you called me a homer and ended up working out but I said if Justin Jefferson or Brandon Ayuk which is the two receivers that were supposed to fall a little bit in the draft in the late in the first round. The Packers, I, I would imagine, would take one of those guys. But because they missed out on the first six, seven receivers in the draft, why you either trade down if you if you know you want a receiver or bust with your first pick, or you take what you believe is going to help your team in the long run, the organization as a whole, and then draft a serviceable wide receiver in the second round where you can get one. You don't want to use your first round pick to get second round talent. And I think that's yeah. what the Packers avoided doing yet last night. And that's a now win. He was, that now he was a great, he was a great one first round pick. So he did go in the first round. Technically, I don't see why the green Bay Packers had to trade up four spots to get right. him as me, as you and I both spoke about off air on this topic. Uh, green Bay must've felt like somebody else was in the running to get him. I had no idea who that other team was. They ended up going after Jordan Love, and I have some statistics that no one really had yesterday. 
So Jordan Love is going to get a contract, a four-year deal for $12.3 million, most likely, with like a $6.5 million signing bonus. And then you have Aaron Rodgers, who's going to be in the middle of his uh, extension that he signed. And his cap number for 2021, year 2021, is $36.6 million. Yeah, so for all the people that, that don't think we're taking care of Aaron Rodgers, uh, his pockets are definitely healthy, healthy, I'll tell you that. But, I mean, listen, it is what it is. At this point, you just got to take it and, and keep and keep moving along with it. Help is going to come. There's still great talent in this draft. There's still – we talked about it before the draft on Wednesday, how loaded at wide receiver this draft is. So if there's going to be a position to where you can skip around, get what, you, what your heart wants – then next round, take what your brain wants, which is what the team needs. Cameron, my thing is this. My thing is this. This kid needs reps in order to get better. I don't think he ends up getting those reps in order to get better. Jordan Love is going to sit behind Aaron Rodgers. As long as Aaron Rodgers is healthy and produces like he's been doing his whole career, that kid is not going to see the field. Aaron Rodgers, in my opinion, is the number one overall pick that fell luckily all the way down to the Green Bay Packers at pick 24. Jordan Love wasn't the best quarterback in the draft. He was probably fourth best quarterback in the draft behind Burrow, Tua, and Herbert. Ended up going 26 to the Green Bay Packers. For To me, is just I, I just don't understand it. There's so much other stuff that you probably could have ended. You probably could have ended up picking Jordan Jordan Love in the second round, not the not first. with the pick, not with the pick we have. We have pick number sixty two, um, in 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 the second round. We weren't getting trade that. Trade up, <laughs> trade up. You would have to trade up. So then, what do you do with the first pick? You get a, 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 trade, a second a trade, round, or trade the second, or trade the first round pick down. It seems a it seems a little muddy. You're training down. You're trading back up in the first in the in the second round. All to dance around the fact that they really love Jordan Love, you know, no pun intended. But Matt LaFleur came out and said, if this guy falls to us, we are taking him. We are planning for the future. We will find help for Aaron. Hold on. We will, we will find help in order, to, in order to suit that. But this is the Green Bay Packers. It's not Aaron Rodgers. We did this. The Green Bay Packers did this same exact thing 15 years ago. Aaron Rodgers is 36 years old right now. He's got maybe four years left. He's even came out and said, my career is winding down. Why not put Jordan Love behind him so he can learn? And you said he's not going to get any, any reps. How many reps do you think Aaron Rodgers got when Brett Favre was the starter those three years he was sitting behind him? Brett Favre had the record for most consecutive starts. He saw no time. Well, then he jumped Jordan in as a starter in 2000. Jordan not Aaron Rodgers. But who thought Aaron Rodgers was going to be this Aaron Rodgers when – when when he was in the draft room, how many GMs? Aaron Rodgers was supposed to be the number one overall pick. Jordan Love was not supposed to be the number one overall pick. And hold on, and then what happened? How many people passed on Aaron Rodgers? They were just all because, wrong, right? Just because of need, just because of need, no one else needed a quarterback. Listen, you're now you're comparing drafts. Now you're now things are getting sort of out of. Because that, uh, that's what dictates it. No, absolutely not. You got to take it by an individual basis here. You can't listen when you're planning for your future, when you know you have a quarterback that has a shelf life of three to five years, the Packers are, a, we are a long-term planner. We're methodical. They literally, the GM, this is the second year as the GM. He came out, Brian Goot, he came out, uh, Last, uh, before this year started, and somebody asked him why you, uh, why you drafted, uh, excuse me, somebody asked Matt LaFleur what they loved about Aaron Rodgers. And he said, Aaron Rodgers gives us a long-term position to methodically develop quarterbacks over time. That's the winning formula is developing a quarterback over time, not throwing him to the wolves as soon as he's drafted. We're not the Cleveland Browns. We're not the Miami Dolphins. We have the, we have the advantage of having Aaron Rodgers to okay, have, to have I her. I don't disagree with you, but Aaron Rodgers comes out and also says that he hasn't had a skill position player drafted in the first round in the 15 years that he's been there. So we're, so we're supposed to lay down and let our belly get pat and just let Aaron, Aaron Rodgers run the show? Remember, it's bigger. It's bigger. This is about the organization. All right? Yeah, do you help your guy? Your, listen, you can't reach. Who, hey, who's to say, Emilio, who's to say the Packers didn't try to trade up to get uh, a Henry Ruggs or I'm, a not TD I'm not questioning it. I'm pretty sure they tried. I'm not questioning right? that. So we only hear about the trades that happen, not the ones that get declined. So yeah. who? let's just say, hey, no, we don't want to help you trade up here. 
we're not, you're, you can't get up past, past 26. You're not getting higher than 26 from 30. At, once they got to 26, they realized, holy shit, not, there's, there's the first six or seven receivers are off the board. Let's not reach here. Let's get this kid that it, it's going to be our future. I just find it really, really hard to get that kid the proper reps that he's going to need in order to be able to play on a high level. I saw another show. Shout out to Pat McAfee and the boys. They were ripping and running on the segment and basically saying, hey, listen, Jordan Love was playing a bunch, a bunch of kids that, you know, go to Delaware State, this state, that state, blind university, deaf and dumb. Like, it was crazy. Like, Yeah, I, I, heard, I heard he was ragging on him a little bit. But what, say what you will, you do have a group of five – representative here in this chat and <laughs> as I'm holding up the UCF sign but Utah State is in the Mountain West which is the second best group of five conference after the American they still play against some decent talent they played against Boise State Boise State was ranked this past year this past season Utah State and Jordan Love played against LSU and showed their defense did not show up against LSU but their offense showed out a little bit Jordan Love did they all they played another Power Five team this year, who they beat. I mean, you know, you Carson once went to an FCS school, went to North Dakota State, and they took him with second overall in the draft. So as far as the competition that these quarterbacks are facing, you can get past that if you like the guy and his mechanics and 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 how much of a raw talent he is. I'm telling you, bro, this guy he's like a Russell Wilson, but with four inches of height added to him. He's a tall kid, and I think that's who the Packers traded up for because. I think sometimes people, he doesn't know which team to throw to. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in this past year, he had a, he went through a little bit of an offensive coaching quarterback carousel his senior year, which sort of screwed him up. Or this past year, not a senior; he's only twenty one years old. Um, so, as far as that's concerned, I think the Seahawks were the team to scare the Packers to trade up four spots because, yeah, Russell's only thirty one years old, but he's a similar style quarterback to Russell Wilson. Jordan Love is so it maybe would have made sense. But all in all, I'm happy with the pick. I'm, we're still going to get some help for Aaron Rodgers in this draft. We might trade some for a veteran wide receiver. You just don't know. You can't freak out at this point right now. We secure the future, so check that box. Now let's get to the 2020. Let's say we don't move up here in the second round to get a wide receiver. Now everyone, all the fans, be quiet now, and, and everything gets back to status quo. So, Shout out to uh, Ryan Leaf. I saw Ryan Leaf made a comment earlier today to ESPN basically saying that he reached out to Aaron Rodgers through some people or whatever it may be and that they're not too pleased with it because the organization never came to him to let him know that they were going to do that. So he, I guess Aaron is a little bit upset because there was no transparency in selecting a quarterback of the future to be able to have Aaron mold him. I don't know necessarily if Aaron, you know, deserves that from an organization standpoint. Somebody like Peyton Manning, they would have definitely warned him, hey, listen, we're taking Andrew. You know, they did do that. You know what I'm saying? But you know, I don't know, you know if what? Aaron has that type of relationship with the Packers. Let Aaron Rodgers get upset. Let him get mad. Let him play with an even bigger chip on his shoulder. When he got drafted that low, that's what made him so good is because he said he had a chip on his shoulder from getting passed on by so many teams. Yo, He's that kid would never see the field if that happens then. He's one of – I mean, it's the same situation. I'm going to get to it. Hold on. But – it's when, wins the Super Bowl in 2010. Now he's entering his 16th season, Aaron Rodgers, right? So now that fire is going away a little bit. Maybe this reignites the fire for Aaron Rodgers and finishes off the back end of his prime, and maybe we win another world, uh, uh, another Super Bowl. However, if that does happen and Aaron Rodgers goes for another five years, then simple. The, the Packers do the same thing the Patriots did with Jimmy Garoppolo. They drafted Jimmy Garoppolo to be the successor of Tom Brady. Tom Brady stepped up his game and went another X amount of years, and they're like, oh, crap, we got to get rid of Jimmy G. Fine, get rid of Jordan Love, and then draft the, the guy once Aaron Rodgers retires in 2025. There's hey, options listen. here, Emilio. I want to shout out the Green Bay Packers organization because For the doing... draft was fucking boring until yes. they decided to fuck shit up and yes. mess up the draft. We needed it, man. Listen, and, and shout out to the Packers for, for not just trying to make their fans happy, but for doing what they think is best for the program long term. Yeah. Four hey, teams should be know. like you. <laughs> Let me get to the promo. This part of the show is brought to you by our sponsor, El Cubano Sandwich Shop.com. Use the promo code EAC and receive discounts on online pickups or delivery orders. Enjoy a cafe con leche or natural pre workout shot at Cuban Coffee to start your day. The daily lunch specials and their steak sandwich is next level. Once again, use the promo code EAC. That's ElCubanoSandwichShop.com or 
5110. Remember, use the promo code EAC, and that's El Cubano Sandwich Shop in Coral Springs. Guys, I know we got a bunch of topics on this Effort Friday episode. Marcus Mack, remind me that after this, we have to shoot that thing. Please, just, I don't want to forget. You with us, Marcus? Um, definitely. Definitely. All right. So our first topic for today, we'll be talking about um, Houston Texans. Laramie Tunzel agrees to three-year, $66 million contract extension. Now, let me explain something to you. I'm going to start this off, Cameron, and I want to start it off with smoke weed every day. Marcus Mack, if you can pull it up later on after the show is over, Larry Tunzel was originally drafted by the Miami Dolphins and was caught with a video of him hitting a bong inside of a gas mask and literally just smoking weed inside of the gas the mask. The spice, spice of life. So yeah. listen to me. The spice of life <laughs> scenario got Larry Tunzel dropped so low and then the Dolphins picked him up. He hasn't had a problem since. Got traded from the Dolphins to the Texans in that whole restructuring of the Dolphins. Tank Penny, uh, that brought, that's the one huh? that brought Penny Stills over to the Dolphins. Right. Went to Texans. He's over there. He's balling. He's a now key protector for Deshaun Watson in the future. And Larry Tunzel just became the highest paid offensive lineman to hit a spice of life, gas mask, <laughs> weed, you name it. I mean, hey, when you think about it, the Dolphins have had some kind of uh, – entertainment with their offensive line you had a few years ago when the whole uh incognito the bully the bully scandal uh between him and that other offensive lineman uh that led to uh, suspensions you had uh their offensive line coach a couple years ago on camera snorting cocaine uh and sending sending money to a hooker in las vegas and then he had literally tunkel that's Tuesday a, down here. That's Tuesday. Know, you know Tuesday that. Down here. That's and then you have Larry Tunzel hitting, uh, hitting the bong in a gas mask. So you got some interesting offensive lineman headlines in Miami over the past don't, few years. Don't listen for you for you listeners that don't know. Down here in South Florida, a person will be at the gas station and do a freaking bump off their wrist right yeah. in front of you while they're the gas. Yeah, Atlantic Atlantic Boulevard. That's a, that's a, <laughs> it's a, a, a no brainer. Shout out to Larry Tunzel. Larry Tunzel gets a three year deal, sixty six million dollars. 50 of it guaranteed, and he did it with no agent. He don't have to pay nothing, no agent fees, no nothing. There's no state tax in freaking Houston neither in Texas. Shout out to Larry Tunzel. You're so smart. I'm so happy for you. You're the best offensive lineman to hit a gas mask bomb. <laughs> Marcus Mack, what's the next topic? All right. Uh, we're keeping it in Houston. Uh, Houston Texans were interested in working on a contract extension for quarterback Deshaun Watson. Uh, Watson just completed the third season of his rookie contract. So, Cam, we know that this is why um, DeAndre Hopkins was traded out of Houston was because the Tunzel deal, paying J.J. Watt, paying a couple of the players, and you knew you had to save the big, big money for Deshaun Watson, who's going to break the bank and be one of the highest paid quarterbacks in the NFL when his extension comes due. Um, I don't have a problem with them doing this. I think this is a great idea. He is truly, really very, very worth uh, the price of admission as Jerry Jones once again is on his private yacht as I'm watching on the TV right now. Um, I, I'm happy for it. I'm glad it's getting done. Deshaun Watson deserves it. He's a straight baller, nice kid. You know, everybody loves him. Yeah, absolutely. Um stud top five quarterback in the NFL. So it's good to see that he's getting his contract extended soon. And he's got some good help, obviously with Laramie Tunsil, we just spoke about and uh, David Johnson, new running back extraordinaire in, in Houston. And we'll see if they get some help here uh, as far as a wide receiver in the draft. Um, I would predict that they try to grab one here and maybe in the third or fourth round, just not to replace DeAndre Hopkins, but just to get that, that position a little bit, you know, deeper uh, coming into this year. So um, we'll see how that goes. And just a topic, uh, going off topic here, uh, you mentioned Jerry Jones in his space shuttle making draft picks. They just drafted, uh, what was it, Trayvon Diggs? That's Stephon Diggs's, Stephon Diggs's little brother. He's always – Jerry Jones and the Cowboys always have to get a name or a sexy pick. They always have to do it. They could need an outside linebacker or a guard, an offensive guard, and they'll okay. draft CeeDee Lamb just because he's there. I mean, you're never – You'll never see Jerry Jones take a kid from Lenoir Lenoy Ryan <laughs> University. No, 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 chance, no. Right? no, 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 quite the opposite, in fact. 
You know what? I, I want to be honest with you. I wonder where the fuck in the middle of the ocean is Jerry Jones stunting on that yacht right now? He's just in Bimini. He's just right outside of Bimini. Just on the <laughs> yacht making picks. A little margarita. Cameron knows something. <laughs> so here's my question. Cameron knows something. So here's my question I'm going to ask you guys. Who really has the baby giraffe? Do you think Cliff Kingsbury in Arizona has the baby giraffe as a pet? Or you think Jerry Jones has it as a fucking pet on his yacht? Cliff Kinsbury has a baby giraffe. Jerry Jones has a whole zoo. <laughs> My God. It's crazy. Right. Is it? So going, <laughs> going into the next topic, um, which is <laughs> – it's a shitty one. Uh, Tennessee head coach <laughs> – <laughs> Tennessee head coach uh, Mike, Mike Rebell's son gets caught taking a poo-poo on, uh, on the NFL Drafts live feed. You say poo poo? A poo poo. So Mike Vrabel. It's his son. He gets a poo poo. <laughs> Mike Vrabel of the Tennessee Titans ended up having his teenage kids in his uh, his draft uh, video conference. You know, in the living room. My man is st- straight dipping. He yo Vrabel took a dip in his mouth that was about the size of like it literally looked like a tumor in his mouth. Yeah, he had a he had a horseshoe tobacco dip in his lip um just right on tv who cares i love it um as we see cam Akers running back from florida state go to the rams here to replace todd Gurley. um but not only that but his kids were electric his two sons one with the mullet and the other one with like the green man suit like the the the, the, the like the, the and like then the in the very suit. corner to the left mike Vrabel's right a mirror is reflecting a kid taking a shit on the toilet on the phone. Yes, with the door open. I guess this, that's how it rolls in the Vrabel house. That, that's how we get down. We don't even we don't even fucking close doors when we're she taking the, the door shit. open. We leave the door open. <laughs> we let everybody smell the aroma. You no, know? because not for nothing. If you really think about it, when you fart or when you take a shit, that shit smells good to you and you only. It don't smell good to nobody else. Right, but I guess Vrabel's it goes cross pr- platform. I guess it might smell good to different generations of the Ra- of the Vrabel family. So what kind of dra- show are we becoming when we're talking about right. shit fragrances? Right, it, it, it's draft milieu. It, it's dra- you smell the draft success brewing. That's what's going on in that household right there in in Tennessee. Shout out to Mike Vrabel for keeping it real to the fullest extent. My God. All right, so so our last topic is going to be there was a bit of a melee with uh with cd lamb at the draft uh you know grabbing the phone back from his girlfriend you see, uh, oh, yeah. i guess i guess the 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 girlfriend okay so he had the phone in his hand and the girlfriend grabbed the phone and he grabbed it back so she real quick, replies man. huh real quick he grabbed it real back. quick yeah real quick i mean a lot of people had stuff to say so, you know, he replied or he put something out on Twitter just saying, hey, man, it's not that serious. You know, his girlfriend put something out. She put up a post saying, you know, um, his agent was calling and she was doing the girlfriend thing to do by answering his phone, which I'm quite sure she was having a great day that day. And my boyfriend is getting drafted. But, you know, everybody's going to make it what it probably isn't. Or what it probably- had, to hum- had to humble her on national TV. Had the yeah, she had it, yeah, yeah, real quick. Am I am I the only one that saw this? And the media, the first thing I thought about was Ike and Tina Turner, and Ike just <laughs> literally slapping the shit out of Tina Turner. Left yeah, and, right and he did it place. so calmly. He did it so, so calmly. Listen, in 2020, that's the Ike and and Tina slap. It's taking the phone out of your hand. That's the new slap in this 2020 uh, technological era that we live he in. He didn't even world. look her way. It was like. <laughs> He he knew where the phone was and he just snapped. Yeah, the like yeah, yeah, yeah. But shout I, out to <laughs> shout out to Jalen Hurts who just got drafted by the Philadelphia Eagles. That's a nice backup for Carson Wentz just against Carson wow. Wentz. Wow, interest. That's a he's he's actually a nice little fit in Philly. Yeah, I can see him in, a, in an Eagles jersey. Uh, absolutely, without question. The CD Lamb situation is just funny as hell. Like it's just. It's just hilarious to yeah, me. You'd, you'd, have, you'd really have to see it. Yeah, I saw, what's it called? I saw, I was telling you guys before this, but I might as well share it with the audience. Someone posted, like someone commented right under the CD Lamb video. Uh, and they were like, this is what happens when Domino's hits your phone with the congrats, babe, text. Talking about like, 
talking about like that's, that's really that's really the side piece, but you have her under Domino's instead right. of you got her under Domino's oh. pizza just in case. <laughs> Crazy, crazy. Well, guys, we need more content this weekend, and we're going to get it with the NFL draft. I appreciate you guys checking in. This is going to totally end episode 32. Make sure you click like, subscribe on all podcast platforms and on YouTube. Uh, We'll check you out episode 33. Guys, appreciate you guys. Have a good night. Oh, sugar honey iced tea. It's the EAC show. (laughs) 